Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another time of devotion. We hope everyone's doing well. And my mom mentioned several weeks ago in one of her devotions how dad gets up every morning and he writes a new scripture on a, a little chalkboard that she got him for his birthday a couple years ago. And he blesses our hearts every day with the new scriptures that he writes. And that particular morning he had wrote Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And as I sat on the couch that morning with my coffee, I thought to myself, of all the times through the years that I would read a scripture like that, that one in particular, and I would think to myself that somehow that scripture doesn't work. And as I grew in the Lord and grew in my relationship with Him, I certainly realized that at those moments, that certainly wasn't the Lord's fault. That was my fault for not following the stipulation that's right there where it says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And I also began to think that morning uh, in reference to thinking somehow that scripture didn't work and realizing that it was my fault. Mom has told this story many years, and some of you have probably heard it, and each time we tell it, Dad says it's fine to tell it. There was one particular time I woke up uh, early one morning, early one morning and the microwave I could hear from my room in the back I could hear that the microwave somebody was punching buttons in the microwave which is why I'm standing in the kitchen of, of our camper right now telling this particular story I woke up and oh it was just beep 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 and then a little bit later beep 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 and this just kept on going and kept on going and I thought what in the world is going on I knew dad would be in the kitchen and so finally the beeping just wouldn't stop so i got out of bed and come in here and i said um dad is something wrong and he said i can't get the microwave to work and when i come in here he had all the dishes pulled down from the top he had recipe books out i mean everything was all over the counter and the microwave door was standing like that and he had his food in there and he just kept on pushing the buttons and he was just so perplexed and he said I don't know what's wrong I've tried I've plugged it and I've unplugged it and replugged it in I've done everything I know to do and it's not working and I said and I, I wasn't being sarcastic or nothing I was still half asleep and I said well dad you have to shut the door in order for it to work and he busted out laughing and we both had a good laugh about it and since it was so super early in the morning I went back to bed and things like that have happened to all of us through the years you know there, there's something that we'll do and we think that there's something faulty with what we're trying to work with and then we realize there's something on our part that we didn't do right uh, in order for it to work. And another scripture that certainly goes hand in hand with the one in Isaiah, and all of us as Christians has quoted Philippians 4, 7 and 9, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he goes on and he tells us what we must do in order for it to work. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And so many times that's what I haven't done. And I would imagine that many of you would be shaking your heads and you realize that that's where you've been as well. You think it, it almost seems unattainable that the peace of God would keep our minds or guard our minds. And it is unattainable if we're not following the rest of these verses, either keeping our minds stayed on him or thinking on exactly what we should think upon. And once we reach that place, we certainly have to make sure that we're not having unrealistic expectations of life. That does not mean that our lives will immediately turn into some kind of a paradise or that we will live completely above trouble, above problems, above sickness. Many of you are battling this coronavirus right now. We hate to even mention it because we're hearing so much about it, but it's a fact. 
It's where we're living right now. But in the middle of all of this chaos, in the middle of a world that is living in so much fear, it is so very, very important that we make sure we keep our minds stayed or fixed upon the Lord. We all know and understand that with our peripheral vision, we can see certain things around us. I can see our table over here to my left. I can see the, the door right here to my right, but I'm not focused on that. It is very much a part of this room. It's something I can't deny. It's here, but my eyes are not stayed upon those things. My eyes are not fixed upon those things. My eyes are fixed on this devotion that I'm having with you. And that doesn't mean that we are deniers of this pandemic that we're in. It doesn't mean that we are uh, living with our head buried in the sand, but we're keeping our minds stayed and fixed upon the Lord. And you've heard the story many times as, as I have of the two artists that were asked to paint a picture of peace. And one of them painted a seashore where everything was perfect. Gentle waves were rolling in. The sun was shining, just a few little puffy clouds in the sky. And the other artist chose to paint a picture of a stormy beach. And the lightning was flashing and the, the, the clouds were angry and the waves were crashing onto the shore. And as the judges came upon these pictures, they came upon the picture that had the sunshine and the beautiful clouds and the gentle waves. And, and there was no mistake that that was a picture of peace. But when they came to the one that was stormy, they scratched their heads and they thought for sure that the man had misunderstood the request of what he was supposed to paint. And he said, no, I didn't misunderstand at all. He said, look just a little bit closer. And as they looked closer in the direction that he pointed, he had painted a little bird over in the cliff of a rock over in the corner of the picture. And he had painted that little bird with his head thrown back and he was singing to the top of his voice. And this artist told these judges, he said, that is peace. And by all means, we realize that we're in a world of trouble. We're in a world of chaos. But if we will be as that little bird and we will keep our heart and our mind fixed upon our Savior, He's the one that's never let us down and He never will. And if we will do those things, it's a promise that He will keep us in perfect peace. It didn't say just peace. It said perfect peace. I don't remember who sang this song years ago, but in my mind, I can hear a little black sister that sang, ain't no harm in keeping my mind stayed on Jesus. And, and that has rang in my heart all through this pandemic. And if we're not careful, if I'm not careful, there's times that I'm expecting certain verses to work and I'm trying to figure out what in the world is wrong with those verses when there's nothing wrong with this sacred word. Nothing whatsoever wrong. These promises are sure. They are forever settled in heaven. It's times that I am not doing everything that I should do for them to have effect in my heart and in my mind. So I pray as you go about your day that the peace of God will keep your heart and keep your mind as you are keeping your mind stayed upon the Lord. It's a promise. It will work if we'll do our part. God bless you. I can't wait to see you again next time.